Okay guys, we got this 2020 Ford Escape here and it keeps coming up saying like hill assist, malfunction, like service all wheel drive and stuff like that. It's not coming up right now for some reason. Um, I scanned the car. Um, I have it running right now. We're at, uh, we got these codes right here. Power transfer, actuator, driver right here, these faults, these three faults. Um, I'm gonna quick look this stuff up in service information. Cause I just took it for a drive. There you go. Like hill start right there. See that pre-collision. Like we keep getting these messages, and as you can see, I'm not even driving. It's in park. Um, just opening, closing the door. Let me look this stuff up, and we'll see what's going on. Here. Okay, guys. So got one code here. Um, this is the 19. Says this DTC sets when the module detects excessive, cur ex excessive current flow. Uh, actually, is that our code? I don't think that's our code. What's our other one? C009. There you go. This one sets when it detects the uh, PTU actuator voltage is out of range. PTU actuator voltage out of range less than eight volts it's below threshold so let's check that one out because that seems important let's see what our module voltage is if we can see it on the scan tool i think this module lives underneath the passenger seat too let's see let's go back let's go all the drive control module live data have voltage oh look at that ten point nine volts put in gear look at that and what are we at ten point nine volts okay and we're at fourteen point seven right now at our DLC let's put this in park let's shut this off and turn the key on I bet you this thing's going to be a lot lower now. Let's see nothing else came on. Let's go live data. Let's see what it is now. Let's see now we got hill assist pre-collision. Let's see what our voltage is. Look at that, 8.6 volts. There's our problem. And let's go back, see what our, we're at 12.6. So we got a four volt drop. I think this module, like I said, I think this lives under the passenger seat on these. I have to look it up. Man, these cars are loud. Let's see. Might have to pull this seat out. Let me look this up. Right here it is. All wheel drive control module, right rear vehicle. Oh, that's hybrid. Um, except hybrid under passenger seat. So we gotta get this passenger seat out. Okay, guys. So it looks like G is G400 on this diagram. I'm looking at the diagram for the all wheel drive control module. 46 is uh, not used. I did find some posts online where people said they added pin 46 and it fixed the problem. It looks like it grounds right through the case. So I don't know why we weren't getting a... Like, why weren't we... Why weren't we getting a ground unless the ground burned up in the case? I kind of just want to make sure that there's nothing in this all-wheel drive module that'll like deploy airbags or something if I ground it externally. Deploy an operation. Hmm. 
I'm not seeing anything. Let's see if I can show you that post. Um, right here, I found a post. Like I, I was, I just googled these codes, and then I got this post. Oh, it's this one. Right here on the Ford Escape form, and they showed how you like cut the module open. And then they said something about the uh, grounds inside. Oh, uh, right here. That th these aren't being grounded right. And then to add a ground right here. Set a ground and ground it to the car, and it fixes the problem. Here, the genius PCB designer put the ground screws on the wrong side. Oh. Uh, let's see. Side. This that's supposed to make contact with the case, and that's the only ground. I guess that would make, yeah. Then it must be sandwiched in the, in between. So that makes sense. That'd be why that ground probably fixes it, because that ground leg, yeah. So that ground. Looks like right here, I'm assuming that's the one. It goes right, yeah, because these go through vias or whatever, through the board. Right here, this goes to this green outside, which would be the case ground. It comes all the way up here, so it goes around. Looks like... Where's that, this one? Uh, oops. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't know which one 46 is. Well, we can add 46 and see if it fixes our problem. Because I tried, like I said, I tried grounding through my case to the uh, to the light or to the switch here, and it didn't make a difference. We can try it again. So now it's making connection. Well, now it says 9.5, but if I wiggle this, I think it'll go up or one of these. Uh, it was higher. I think our problem's inside the module itself. Yeah, because if I take this off, our voltage drops down to NA and it goes offline. I connect it back up. So I think our problem's inside this. So let's add that ground and we'll see if that fixes it. Because this is a direct connection. I'm not even going through a test light. Right to chassis ground right here and it's not making a difference. When I first connected it up, it went way up. It was at 11, but then I heard the actuator click underneath the car. So, yeah, it doesn't seem to matter what we go to. So, let me uh, get a ground, or uh, let me see if I can get a terminal, and we'll try to put a terminal on there. Okay, guys, so here's the terminal that they were talking about. That's not used. The other two are used. There you go. So, what I did was I took the spade terminal. And I'm going to put this spade terminal in there. Um, I put the I took the cover off, so we can actually put this on with the cover. I mean, we can pop the cover off once we put it on too. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you guys how to put this terminal in there. Okay, so now that we got this locked down, we can come in here, release the tab. I'll try and do this one-handed. Pop this off. Now it's now this is locked on, and now we can put our terminal in there. So we take our terminal. Slide this in here. Yeah, we can force it on our terminal. There we go. Actually, let me try to get that on there better. Okay, guys, so it's on there. Look how far in that is. It's way up in there. So it can't, it can't fall off. It can't vibrate off. So we can double check it. Yeah, take that turn. Sorry guys. Yeah, it's not budging. 
So that is in all the way. There we go. And that's that end is crimped on there. So now what we can do is we can take this, we can ground this, and we can turn our car on. And then we should be able to talk to our module. And we should have, oh, look at that. 11.75. Look how solid that is. I'm happy with that. So if we go back, look at that, 12. So we got a quarter of a volt drop. And that's just through this ground right here. So we'll add this to our wire here. Or actually, I'll probably put it up here because this goes right to the chassis then. Then we don't have to worry about any of these. And uh, we'll get this all bolted back down in. I'll put this cover on because this cover can go over top of this then. But um, you can also get the proper terminal that'll lock into there, but this should be good. I don't foresee anybody really messing with this too much. Okay guys, I got it all back in. You can see the ground right there. Right there is where I ran it. Um, I did have to cut the carpet to get it out though, because I couldn't get it out from over here. You'd have to, I think you'd have to take a bunch of stuff out to get this out. Um, let's see what our, we're at 12 volts. If we come down, let's see what we're at with our module. We missed it. 11.67. So there we go. Let's start this up. Now, what are we at? 13.5. 13.7, 8, we're almost at 14 volts, 13 point, look at that, 14, I'd say we fixed this guys, 14.2, 14.4, 0 0.2 volt drop, I think that's good, let me get this seat and everything back together, and then we should be good to go here. Okay guys, so there's what the carpet looks like, isn't too bad, that's with the seat all the way forward. Um, seat back here's what the front looks like thing looks good let's good scan this car clear our codes okay, okay. So let's go back so we got clear codes from having the seat unplugged and that module unplugged See fault scan. So we're gonna we're gonna have set a lot of codes. Okay, there we go. Let's see quick erase. There we go. So now if we go into our all-wheel drive control module, we're at 12.8 volts right there. And down, we got 12.5, start this up. I put it in gear. Oh, there we go, I put it in low. I don't know if that locks anything or not. We're at 14.2 volts. Come back 14.5. There we go, guys. I'm gonna say we fixed it. Shut it off. Start it back up. Shut it off again. Start it back up. Scan for codes. Uh, what do we got here? Looks like we might have one code. Lost communication with ECM. That might be an old code. Let's see. Let's see. Let's try this again. Now uh, we got the same code. That's weird.
back up. That was weird. It's weird because we don't have any lights either. Just back up here. See if anything comes up. Put it in low, see if that makes a difference. No. Hmm. Oh no, I'm gonna have them drive it. And if you see this video, then uh, if you see this video, then everything's good so far. I don't know why we're getting this code. But um, I'll see what happens because we have no lights. I'll just clear this codes. So I'll shut the car off. I don't know. If, is there a reset in here? Let's see. Sometimes they got. Oh. Wait, was I in the wrong thing? Oh, this is taking forever. Oh, this is the audio control module. That isn't even the one that we were working on. That's the audio control module. We were working on the all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive has no codes. So, yeah, I'm calling this fixed. Hope you guys like this. See you later.